Hi guys, Ali Duzette here, and I got a really great question in my messages the other day, and I wanted to talk about it. Um, this person asked, "What if they, uh, what if they are a Scorpio, and now we're having this Scorpio Taurus eclipse portal, or what if they are a Taurus?" Um, basically, this lady had um, some friends that were born with a Scorpio sun and a Taurus sun, and she said, "How can I better support my friends that have this?" You know, they're, they were born in Taurus season or Scorpio season, and now we're in this eclipse portal that has to do with Scorpio and Taurus. And I thought that was a great question, and I wanted to talk about it. So um, right now, I'm going to pull up my chart. Uh, this is just a, a transit chart. You can see it's the current transits. I'm recording this at 9.29 a.m. in Springville, Utah. And so... This is what a star chart looks like, right? And this orange one here is Taurus. And Taurus is the bull, okay? He's got the little horns. Ah. And so this, this is Taurus. And this is the sun. It's a circle with a dot in it. So if you run your own chart, uh, I mean, most people know if, most people know what sun sign they are. You can just Google up your birthday and be, say, oh, I'm a Taurus, I'm a Pisces, whatever. Um, but this is what Taurus looks like on a star chart. And this down here, that M with a scorpion tail is Scorpio. So this is the Scorpio, the scorpion, and this is the bull. Okay. So that is what you're going to look for in your own chart um, to find out what you have going on in Scorpio and Taurus. So here's the situation. So you can see this horseshoe here. This is the south node. It's the basket. Over here, we have the north node, and it's also a horseshoe, but it's like the lucky horseshoe. So you have the horseshoe of the north node and the horseshoe of the south node. And for everybody, we're going from the south node to the north node. The north node is like, they also call it like the node of fate or the node of destiny. It's telling you where you're headed towards. So everybody in the whole world is going from Scorpio energy to Taurus energy, or at least that's the goal. Okay. Um, so, okay. This transit, the nodal path is going to be from Scorpio to Taurus for 18 total months. So this, it started in January and now it will keep on going until uh, like June or July of 2023, I think late June. And so we have a while for this energy to be going on. Okay. Uh, and what this means is that everything that you have going on in Scorpio or in Taurus is going to be triggered by that nodal path for this whole 18 month period. So if you have Mercury in Scorpio and the South node is transiting Scorpio, uh, to me, that's telling me that you're going to have this 18 months to really be evaluating what generational baggage, like ancestral issues, inherited issues, um, secrets, uh, hidden stuff, dealing with your ability to communicate, okay? Because Mercury deals with communication, okay? And Scorpio deals with other people's resources, inherited stuff, secret stuff, death and birth, um, all of that kind of thing. So as that South Node is transiting, it's going to kind of like trigger whatever planets are in there. So what if it's your sun? That's the real question. So what if you are a Scorpio? What if you are a Taurus? What is going on here with this eclipse portal? And, and with, the, with this 18 month period of this situation. Um, so with as far as the 18 months, to me, what this is just saying is that the universe at this time is primed to show up for you with situations that will organically force you to deal with uh, whatever you have going on in Scorpio and Taurus as far as it relates to your destiny, okay? Like your overall life mission. The nodal path, you can kind of view it as the life mission. And so right now, our life mission is to go from Scorpio to Taurus. And remember, Scorpio is gonna deal with secrets and hidden things. Taurus deals with land and like obvious things. You look out the window and see the trees. And uh, Taurus deals with um, life and like farming and cultivation. Scorpio is the sign of like sex and death and birth, like giving birth. And Taurus is going to be dealing with the stuff in between all of that. You know, Taurus is going to be dealing with you were born and now I'm going to feed you breakfast, lunch and dinner for 18 years until you move out, you know, or for your whole life. Um, Taurus 
Taurus is very steady and stable and it keeps life going, you know? So, um, so we're going from this place of hidden things to a place of obvious things. And, um, Scorpio deals with, uh, other people's resources, like your DNA, you got it from other people, you know, it deals with, uh, inheritance, like if your grandma dies and you get a big check or you inherit a bunch of debt or whatever is going on, like anything that you would inherit from somebody else goes in there. Um, anything that you receive from other people. So a great example of this was somebody who, um, they had bought a bunch of land or something, but they couldn't get their house built. So they had to, to live on a trailer on somebody else's land, which is totally this Scorpio Taurus axis. Taurus is going to be your own land. And if you have to live on somebody else's land, like renting, that's going to be in Scorpio. And so of course, what do we have going on now? This big housing crisis, uh, who gets to live where can you can you support your own self with your own resources like that's a big question right now that a lot of people are having to deal with especially as inflation is causing prices of everything to rise um, and Taurus deals with money I mean Taurus and Scorpio both deal with money and so this is a very money centric resource centric axis and that south node and north node are bringing to all of the people in the world, organic situations where we have to deal with whatever unresolved trauma we have in those areas. Okay. So, so if you have a sun in Taurus or Scorpio, to me, that's just saying that you're probably going to get a little extra helping of this organic set of situations that just naturally show up and help you focus on these issues that you brought with you. So I really believe that the sun sign that you were born to has a lot to do with the gifts and talents that you brought with you from before you were born and also the trauma and struggles that you brought with you from before you were born. So um, so whatever it is in you that needs to be addressed regarding Taurus and Scorpio is going to have things come up to stir it up and get you to to focus on it. So, uh, so Taurus, okay. Like in its positive side, Taurus is really steady and stable and it loves things to be beautiful. Taurus loves things to be cozy and comfortable. Like if you have to go stay at a friend's house, then having a friend that's a healthy Taurus, like that could be fabulous. They will probably feed you delicious food. You'll probably have very comfy sheets and a very comfy bed and they'll probably have like a little fire going and it'll be so comfortable and enjoyable. Um, On the other hand, the dark side of Taurus can look like hoarding. It can look like obesity. It can look like um, food addiction and addiction of all kinds because Taurus is so driven to uh, be comfortable that sometimes it can run away from things and not want to face them if they're uncomfortable. Um, And it wants to feel good. And so like running away from things that aren't comfortable and wanting to feel good, like, wow, talk about a recipe for addiction, right? So when Taurus is healthy, like what can compare to a good Taurus, like a healthy Taurus energy and what can compare to an unhealthy Taurus energy, right? And so how that energy shows up for each person just depends on what energy they bring to the chart, okay? Anything in a chart can show up as positive or negative, There's no such thing as a bad chart. What happens is we all have whatever chart that we have, and then we get to use our agency to choose how those things are going to show up for them, how they're going to show up for us. Of course, if you have kids, so I have five kids. And so at this point, I can verify that people come with personalities. They are just born how they are born, and they have their own feelings and personalities from the time they're born. And um, my mom would always joke that we, um, that me and my siblings all had our personalities like in the womb where, you know, my, my brother, like if people touched her belly, he would like cuddle up to their hand. And when people tried to take an ultrasound for me, I just kicked the, (laughs) uh, the ultrasound wand away and all they got was pictures of feet and they couldn't ever find out my gender before I was born. Um, But you know, we come here by, by the time we're already in the womb, 
we have these personalities, right? And so we come here with this chart and we've already begun that process of expressing whatever is in the chart with whatever the core energies are that we came here with, healthy or unhealthy. And I have a whole book about this. It's called Deep Past Resolution on Amazon, recommended, love it. I think all the humans should read it and I think you'll get a lot out of it. But, uh, but the point is that the, the sun sign that you're born in, it, you come here with that sign because you have a lot of the gifts that are associated with it and probably also a lot of the trauma associated with it. So for example, I'm a Virgo. This is Virgo right here. And Virgo in its positive side is really reliable. It's an earth sign like Taurus. So very steady, earthy, like it will just reliably step forward and get the job done. Um, very logical and analytical, but the dark side is it's very critical. It can be very judgy, judgmental. Um, it can put logic above everything else, uh, including like relationships. And it can be very tactless and unkind, not on purpose, but it's just, it just doesn't, the Virgo energy doesn't hold space for people's feelings. Like it just wants to think about things. A Virgo, a Virgo moon is going to be thinking their feelings instead of feeling their feelings. A Virgo moon will have a very difficult time feeling their emotions less than like they will think their emotions instead of feeling them. And so for myself, I feel like I came down with those strengths and those weaknesses. And then my life journey is about figuring out how to step into the strengths and, you know, address the weaknesses and learn how to, you know, be logical and be thoughtful about things and, um, you know, be a wise judge instead of a judgy judge, you know, and learn how to hold space for other people and how to present information tactfully and with regard for other people's feelings and this kind of thing. So let's go back to Taurus and Scorpio. So I talked about Taurus's gifts, like the healthy Taurus and the unhealthy Taurus. Healthy Scorpio is going to be incredibly loyal because one thing with Scorpio, Scorpio energy, one of the trials it has to deal with is betrayal. And Pretty much anybody with a Scorpio son will tell you, yes, they have dealt with betrayal. It is the super worst. No, no other sign will take betrayal as hard as a Scorpio. Scorpio, it, a, a betrayal to a Scorpio will just rip them apart. Okay, so Scorpio energy, um, you know, in its light, it's going to be so loyal. It will absolutely be the most trustworthy sign of the chart. You can tell your secrets to a healthy Scorpio and they won't just keep your secrets, but they will help you get to the bottom of your problem and come out on the other side. Scorpio is the energy of death and birth, right? Um, it's the bookends to that Taurus energy. That's just like, Again, the three meals a day for life. Scorpio is the one in the cave. It's the one in the stable, right? Giving birth in the darkness, okay? And then it's the energy that's going to be there while the souls pass from this life into the next as well. It uh, A lot of people with Scorpio energy can be a little bit on the morbid side. Like there's there can definitely be this little fascination with death. Um, Scorpio energies, that's where you would look if somebody's dealing with depression or like suicidal ideation or anything like that. You take a look and see what's going on with Scorpio. But um, but the thing about Scorpio is that I think of it as the energy of baptism. You have to go all the way under the water and then stand back up again. You know, you experience a tiny death so that you can have a new life. And that is the message of Scorpio. And that's um, the Scorpio life cycle is full of deaths and rebirths, and it's not always fun. A lot of Scorpios will tell you it's not fun. Scorpio is actually the least fun, <laughs> is the least fun sign of the chart, I would say. Scorpio and Capricorn, I vote, are the least fun. But, um, but it is so necessary and so beautiful Every person alive needs to go through a death and rebirth process in some respect, and Scorpio energy facilitates that and allows it to happen. Um, in its positive side, 
again, so it's like loyal, it's facilitating these deaths and rebirths. It's the one that you can count on to be that midwife, that doula, um, that death doula. A Scorpio energy is going to feel really comfortable with kind of like darker situations a lot of times. Um, they are willing to face things that other people aren't willing to face. They dig deeper. They just go that much deeper. Again, Scorpio is often linked to things like plumbing, which is so funny. Um, and <laughs> with this eclipse portal, somebody messaged me yesterday that there was a big pipe leak or something up in Salt Lake City. I don't know. I didn't see anything about it, but what this person sent me and I thought, yes, that's like so Scorpio or the, the Supreme Court leak, right? But um, having Scorpio, having prominent Scorpio, especially in like your 10th house or something would indicate that your career would be going deeper. So a lot of people with prominent Scorpio career stuff in their chart, they could be doctors, especially surgeons digging, digging deeply within the mysterious depths of the human body. Uh, they can also be plumbers actually dealing. I mean, Scorpio is a water sign. And what is more Scorpio than like, a bunch of pipes 10 feet underground, right? Like that's so Scorpio. So all of that goes with Scorpio as well. Um, and I just had this beautiful thought about Scorpio and it just left my mind suddenly. Come on, brain. Scorpio, Scorpio. Anyway, so in the dark side of Scorpio, Scorpio can betray you, um, especially in revenge. If if you if it feels like you have betrayed it, Scorpio will betray you right back if it's in a dark place. Um, it can be very depressed. It can deal with things like anxiety. Oh, I was going to say, that's the other positive thing. Scorpio is a healer sign as well because it is a water sign, which is very intuitive. And Scorpio digs deeply. You know, if you have a problem that is so deep within you, you can't see it. Uh, somebody with a prominent Scorpio energy might be able to help you through it. Like if you have a, a healer that has some prominent Scorpio stuff going on. So, um, but anyway, Scorpio, the dark side of Scorpio is like pretty dark, like dark side of Scorpio. That's where you get self-harm. That's where you get like suicidal ideation or more than that. And, um, lying Scorpio is an energy that when it's not healthy, it can lie to you just for the sake of it, you know? Um, so, so pros and cons. So, so you, you get born, you're Scorpio sun. How is that going to show up for you? Are you going to be this compulsive liar? Are you going to be this super loyal healer? That's like massively intuitive. And you look at people and like see their depths and you love them and want to defend them. Like both of those things are going to be two different sides of Scorpio. How you show up is going to depend on you and your own inner soul. And so all of this is to say this nodal path is going to draw up anything within you that needs to be shifted and adjusted for you to live in your higher self space, okay? If you came here as a Scorpio that has like this really awful dark side, or like say you're a Scorpio, you have a ton of depression problems, right? You might actually find that in the next, you know, 15 months or however much we have left of this cycle, you get more depressed or have things show up that are triggering more depression why? To make you depressed and ruin your life? No, no. Because the message of Scorpio is if you get depressed, remember that depression is like a depression in the earth is where it's just a little bit deeper. Okay. If something is depressed, like you have a footprint and it makes a depression, it's just a little deeper. Scorpio invites you to go deeper when you feel depression. That is Scorpio energy inviting you to look at your belief programming, look at your past trauma and deal with it. Scorpio must look at the past and deal with it. It must face its problems. It has to do it. And so this transit for everyone in the whole world is going to be inviting everybody in the whole world to deal with their deepest, darkest inside self the hidden stuff within our own selves, the parts of us that are prone to depression, the parts of us that are prone to betrayal, to being betrayed, to betraying other people, all of us get this chance to face it. And it, these chances will come up um, organically and they're gonna look different person to person. So in the past uh, hour, I think I've gotten messages from people 
um, one person had a big secret come to light about their marriage. Now they're like leaving their spouse. Um, and so, and probably with very good reason, I don't know the whole story, but, um, so that's like something that just organically came up from them. I got a beautiful message from a girl who said a hidden thing came to light for me. And here it is. She sent me this voice message and it was her singing beautifully that her joy is important to her. And like, now she knows that she, her own joy matters to her own heart. And she never knew that before. So that's a great example of the dichotomy here. What are the hidden things that we're going to find out? And if you have a sun sign in Scorpio or Taurus, it's just going to be that much more core to you. Like your core energy will be Taurus or Scorpio, and that core energy is going to be triggered. So if you are a Taurus, if you are a Scorpio, it's just going to be a little bit more intense for you than for other people. Um, a great example of this is somebody I also heard from recently um, whose husband is a Taurus. And so during this eclipse portal, he has been um, <laughs> seeking alternative um, or what's the word? Multiple streams of income. He was like, I've got to diversify. And guess who's in charge of streams of income? That would be Taurus. And and then I guess last night he was explaining his fears about death. And it's like, okay, like this is a man who's, he's a Taurus son and he has got everything triggered right now by this nodal axis. Um, geez, and I love that. And so, uh, so back to the original question. The original question was, um, if somebody has a Taurus son, if somebody has a Scorpio son, how do we best support them through this eclipse portal in particular? So this eclipse portal is just this two weeks from April 30th to May 16th or May 17th, uh, where there's eclipses on both ends and on the way in between, it's like the birth canal. Everybody's energy fields have unzipped. We're all receiving tons of spiritual information that's supposed to help us level up. Most people don't opt into that, right? Most people are just going to be in trauma. They're not listening for the higher messages. They're not actually like trying to heal their lives. So for a lot of people, you know, they're probably not going to make tons of maybe healing progress, but their souls are still getting those uploads that they need. They're still getting the spiritual information that is necessary for whatever is going to come next for them in their life. And so that is fine. But you watching my channel, you are getting all this extra information on how to use this to propel yourself forward and start stepping into that higher expression of these different energies. So that is really good. And so during this eclipse portal, this two weeks, since everybody's energy fields are unzipped, everything is just a lot more intense. Um, there's just a lot happening really quickly. Okay. And everybody is going to feel that differently. You know, right now we are, I think five days in. And for me, I'm like, has it been that crazy for me? Like, no, but, um, but guess what? We've still got you know, over a week to go. And in the next week, my family has three birthdays coming up. We have, um, you know, I have a conference that I may be attending and like, guess what? There's still plenty of time for things to get pretty crazy. So who even knows? And again, the real craziness is what's going on on an energy level. So you may not notice anything happening specifically, but on the other hand, you might. Um, so when it comes to supporting other people in our lives, especially Taurus sons or Scorpio sons. I told this, this wonderful woman, the best way to support them is the best way to support anybody at any time. You be kind, you be considerate, you be thoughtful, right? We have to remember that no matter what your sun sign is and what's going on astrologically, everybody's having a hard time. You know, everybody, at least that's a really great default assumption to make is that everybody around you is in dire need of consideration and thoughtfulness. And if we always treat the people around us with love and respect and think about them and think about their needs and try to be there for them in the way that they need and appreciate, we can never go wrong with that. And it doesn't matter if they're a Scorpio sun or a Cancer sun. And it doesn't matter, you know, what their placements are. The most important thing is, are we being thoughtful of them? You know, and so that is the real message of all of this 
you know, yes, Scorpio suns and Taurus suns are going to be dealing with more than the average Joe during this transit, probably. And it is really kind when other people want to support them extra because of that. But the way to support them is just to hopefully be your normal, wonderful self and be thinking strategically about how to serve the people around you and just, you know, connecting with the divine in love and turning your heart over to God every day and just saying, God, I want to serve other people today. How do you want me to do it? And if we're doing that every day, I feel like we can't go wrong. The people around us will get the support that they need. And that'll be a really beautiful thing. So anyway, thank you so much for being here. I think you are amazing. Of course, like, and subscribe. Um, and come and hang out with me on Facebook. Intuitive Healing with Ali Duzette is the Facebook group. We're working through this eclipse cycle and it's really fun. So, okay, guys, thanks for being here. And I hope you have the best day.